Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Guys, thanks for joining me for another quick episode today. Of course, we're going to continue on with the EMS quick study tips, and we're going to talk about allergic reactions. And this is part two, and I want to focus today on some assessment stuff and some signs and symptoms that you should be looking for, things that should ring a bell when you're assessing patients that you might be considering them having an allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction to something. So, of course, I would like to say why this stuff is important, guys. And as always, it's not just for exams, right? Of course, it is key information to help you pass your exams, to build your knowledge base. But at the same time, it's geared to help you write better report, to make better clinical decisions out there in the field, interact more effectively with other healthcare providers, including doctors, nurses, and even your partners, right? So keep this in mind, guys, right? It's not this isn't like a lecture just on allergic reactions. Anyone can drone on about that, right? I'm trying to give you the highlights, the key points to ring bells on stuff you've already learned, right? This is to reinforce stuff. And of course my hope is that if it doesn't ring a bell, if it's not reinforcing something, that you do go open up your textbook, use a resource, something like my Turbo Medic, or using a blog, or using uh, a, a study guide, something like that, to help you understand what you're not getting, and to master the content and master the topic. So let's get into this today, guys. Again, just a quick overview today. And you know you have to think about, when you talk about allergic reaction too, guys, is the method of entry for the patient, right? Of course, we have inhalation, we have absorption, um, injection, okay, and ingestion, okay? So these are the ways that a patient can be exposed to something that can make them have a uh, reaction, okay? So it's always good to get a good history with patients, ask them about recent changes in their food, in drugs, detergents, cosmetics, stuff like that, right? So what are some of the presentations we're looking for, okay? Of course, upper airway. They might be hoarse, uh, some strider, edema of the upper airway, runny nose, okay, uh, the lower airway, the bronchospasms, mucus production, uh, wheezing, decreased in breath sounds, um, your cardiovascular system where you've got things to think about like tachycardia, uh, dysrhythmias, chest tightness, or even hypotension, right, when you start getting into that anaphylactic state, right? And, of course, your GI tract, okay? Patients will have nausea, vomiting, cramps, diarrhea. I remember one of my first true anaphylactic reactions, the, the, the main thing that struck me was how much a patient had nausea and vomiting and diarrhea and the cramps, okay? That was like a big thing going on that, that sort of hindered treatment, right? We couldn't get them out of the house because they were like glued to the toilet bowl, throwing up and having diarrhea. So that became a big issue in assessing them and getting them out of the house for further treatment, but you knew something was going on, right? Um, so keep that in mind, guys, right? That that someone presents with that. Look at the other things that was mentioned there too. Check the airway, check the cardiovascular aspects of it as well. Okay. Now, some other things to look at too, guys, is things that like your neurological part, right? Are they anxious, uh, dizzy, syncope, and I might maybe they're passing out or half passed out. Uh, general weakness, headaches, seizures, or even coma when you get to severe ends of the allergic reaction, okay? And of course, their skin, right? Um, angioedema, is, are they having swelling? Do they have the urticardia, the, the, the hives going on? Um, are they, their eyes tearing, okay? Now, of course, all these things are all can be presented during uh, an allergic reaction or an anaphylactic reaction, but some of the most common things that we see are, again, the abdominal issues, the wheezing, right, the, the respiratory issue with the wheezing and the hives, okay, but always try to look for the, the other things that are going on, you know, let them stick out their tongue, look for the, um, you know, uh, swelling in their airway, look for the for the general edema in other areas, check them all over for the, for the, the hives, okay, um, you know, try to build that clinical picture of what might be going on with the patient, 
okay? Now, I want to just mention, guys, sort of like a kind of a global thing here, just to kind of overview one more time, common sudden symptoms that you're going to see, okay? Um, and this is for an anaphylactic reaction, uh, allergic reaction, all the different things that you might see, okay? Um, again, abdominal pain. I can't stress that enough. Don't blow off abdominal pain as being just abdominal pain. It could be something else. So look for things like the soft tissue swelling, like uh, tingling or burning, itching type skin, the hypotension, again, a tachycardia, but it might be, the pulse might be weak and tachycardic, right? Cyanosis, the wheezing, rail, the ronchi, especially in the anaphylaxis when they're getting further into the uh, uh, episode, okay? Uh, and then, of course, the altered level of consciousness, okay? Guys, all stuff to think about when you're assessing patients that might be having an allergic reaction, things to think about, things to look for, and again, not everything, right? This is a short, quick video here, but some things that you need to think about when you are assessing these patients, okay? And hopefully, when you're seeing some of these things go on, it's going to kind of alert you, ring a bell, and have you going down the path of the proper treatment and transport decisions for your patients. All right, guys, that is going to be it for today. I hope you engage with me on social media, guys. Check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm at EMS Safe on both Twitter and Instagram. Do a little something different on each of these channels, guys. And, of course, Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. Guys, next week we're going to talk about some of the treatments, okay, for... Uh, anaphylaxis, especially with, you know, when you're treating something that's more of a mild reaction versus a moderate or severe reaction, okay, and talking about some treatment when it comes to anaphylactic shock as well. All right, so that's going to be next week, and we're going to try to hopefully wrap, wrap up the anaphylactic section of the EMS quick study tips. Now, guys, if you like this type of stuff, you like building your knowledge, you like reinforcing what you already know, Check out Turbo Medic, guys. All right, emsseo.com forward slash turbo. If you go there, you can get a trial membership, okay? Um, and you get when you get the trial membership, you're getting access to everything. I'm not holding anything back during that trial, so you can go there. You can get everything that's there for that trial membership, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. And the, the good news is, is that the... EMS quick study guide that these videos are based on is actually part of the membership. So you'll get the actual PDF, you know, digital download of the EMS quick study guide. Okay, so you'll get the entire guide to go ahead and look at. You can actually read along if you wanted to, go to the YouTube videos or the videos here on the blog at EMS office hours and check that out and uh, read along. Just something to think about, guys. Um, if you're interested in that type of stuff, if you want to build your knowledge base, go check that out again. Did the trial membership there. Um, and the link to get, the easiest link to get to it is emsseo.com forward slash turbo. All right, guys, that again, that is it for me. If you've got some minutes of your own, guys, and you want me to post them here, some ideas, some thoughts, and some content you want to see here, on the Monday Minute, just send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. And of course, you can always DM me on any of the social media sites as well, and I'll go ahead and get your message that way also. All right, guys, that's it. As always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.